6.2.2 Nominating It is possible to trustlessly nominate one staking token to an active validator, giving them the responsibility of validator's duties. Nominating works through an approval voting system. Each would-be nominator is able to post an instruction to the staking contract expressing one or more validator identities under whose responsibility they are prepared to entrust their bond. Each session, nominators' bonds are dispersed to be represented by one or more validators. The dispersal algorithm optimizes for a set of validators of equivalent total bonds. Nominators' bonds become under the effective responsibility of the validator and gain interest or suffer a punishment reduction accordingly. 6.2.3 Bond Confiscation and Burning Certain validator behavior results in a punitive reduction of their bond. If the bond is reduced below the allowable minimum, the session is prematurely ended and another started. A non-exhaustive list of punishable validator misbehavior includes being part of a parachain group unable to provide consensus over the validity of a parachain block, actively signing for the validity of an invalid parachain block, Inability to supply egress payloads previously voted as available. Inactivity during the consensus process. Validating relay chain blocks on competing forks. Some cases of misbehavior threatens the network's integrity, such as signing invalid parachain blocks and validating multiple sides of a fork, and as such result in effective exile through the total reduction of the bond. In other, less serious cases, e.g. inactivity in the consensus process, or cases where blame cannot be precisely allotted, being part of an ineffective group, a small portion of the bond may instead be fined. In the latter case, this works well with subgroup churn to ensure that malicious nodes suffer substantially more loss than the collaterally damaged benevolent nodes. In some cases, e.g. multi-fork validation and invalid sublock signing, validators cannot themselves easily detect each other's misbehavior since constant verification of each parachain block would be too arduous a task. Here, it is necessary to enlist the support of parties external to the validation process to verify and report such misbehavior. The parties get a reward for reporting such activity. Their term, fishermen, stems from the unlikeliness of such a reward. Since these cases are typically very serious, we envision that any rewards can easily be paid from the confiscated bond. In general, we prefer to balance burning, i.e. reduction to nothing, with reallocation rather than attempting wholesale reallocation. This has the effect of increasing the overall value of the token, compensating the network in general to some degree rather than the specific party involved in discovery. This is mainly as a safety mechanism. The large amounts involved could lead to extreme and acute behavior incentivization were they all bestowed on a single target. In general, it is important that the reward is sufficiently large to make verification worthwhile for the network, yet not so large as to offset the costs of fronting a well-financed, well-orchestrated, industrial-level criminal hacking attack on some unlucky validator to force misbehavior. In this way, the amount claimed should generally be no greater than the direct bond of the errant validator, lest a perverse incentive arise of misbehaving and reporting oneself for the bounty. This can be combated either explicitly through a minimum direct bond requirement for being a validator, or implicitly by educating nominators that validators with little bonds deposited have no great incentive to behave well. Section 6.3 Parachain Registry Each parachain is defined in this registry. It is a relatively simple, database-like construct and holds both static and dynamic information in each chain. Static information includes the chain index, a simple integer, along with the validation protocol identity, a means of distinguishing between the different classes of parachain so that the correct validation algorithm can be run by validators co-signed to putting forward a valid candidate. An initial proof of concept would focus on placing the new validation algorithms into clients themselves, 
effectively requiring a hard fork of the protocol each time an additional class of chain were added. Ultimately, though, it may be possible to specify the validation algorithm in a way both rigorous and efficient enough that clients are able to effectively work with new parachains without a hard fork. One possible avenue to this would be to specify the parachain validation algorithm in a well-established, natively compiled, platform-neutral language such as WebAssembly. Additional research is necessary to determine whether this is truly feasible. However, if so, it could bring with it the tremendous advantage of banishing hard forks for good. Dynamic information includes aspects of the transaction routing system that must have global agreements such as the parachain's ingress queue, described in section 6.6. .6. The registry is able to have parachains added only through full referendum voting. This could be managed internally, but would more likely be placed in an external referendum contract in order to facilitate reusage under more general governance components. The parameters to voting requirements, e.g. any quorum required, majority required, for registration of additional chains and other less formal system upgrades will be set out in a master constitution, but are likely to follow a fairly traditional path, at least initially. The precise formulation is out of scope for the present work, but, e.g., a two-thirds supermajority to pass with more than one-third of total system stake voting positively may be a sensible starting point. Additional operations include the suspension and removal of parachains. Suspension would hopefully never happen. However, it is designed to be a safeguard, lest there be some intractable problem in a parachain's validation system. The most obvious instance where it might be needed is a consensus critical difference between implementations leading validators to be unable to agree on validity or blocks. Validators would be encouraged to use multiple client implementations in order that they are able to spot such a problem prior to bond confiscation. Since suspension is an emergency measure, it would be under the auspices of the dynamic validator voting rather than a referendum. Reinstating would be possible both from the validators or a referendum. The removal of parachains altogether would come only after a referendum and with which would be required a substantial grace period to allow an orderly transition to either a standalone chain or to become part of some consensus system. The grace period would likely be of the order of months and is likely to be set out on a parachain basis in the parachain registry in order that different parachains can enjoy different grace periods according to their need. Section 6.4, Sealing Relay Blocks. Sealing refers, in essence, to the process of canonicalization, that is, a basic data transform which maps the original into something fundamentally singular and meaningful. Under a POW chain, sealing is effectively a synonym for mining. In our case, it involves the collection of signed statements from validators over the validity, availability, and canonicality of a particular relay chain block and the parachain blocks that it represents. The mechanics of the underlying BFT consensus algorithm is out of scope for the present work. We will instead describe it using a primitive, which assumes a consensus creating state machine. Ultimately, we expect to be inspired by a number of promising BFT consensus algorithms in the core. Tangora, a BFT variant of Raft, Tendermint, and Honey Badger BFT, the algorithm will have to reach an agreement on multiple parachains in parallel, thus differing from the usual blockchain consensus mechanisms. We assume that once consensus is reached, we are able to record the consensus in an irrefutable proof which can be provided by any of the participants to it. We also assume that misbehavior within the protocol can be generally reduced to a small group containing misbehaving participants to minimize the collateral damage when dealing out punishment. The proof, which takes the form of our signed statements, is placed in the relay chain blocks header together with certain other fields, not least the relay chains state tri-root and transaction tri-root. 
The sealing process takes place under a single consensus generating mechanism addressing both the relay chain's block and the parachain's block, which make up part of the relay's content. Parachains are not separately committed by their subgroups and then collated later. This results in a more complex process for the relay chain, but allows us to complete the entire system's consensus in a single stage, minimizing the latency and allowing for quite complex data availability requirements which are helpful for the routing process below. The state of each participant's consensus machine may be modeled as a simple two-dimensional table. Each participant, validator, has a set of information in the form of signed statements, votes, from other participants regarding each parachain block candidate as well as the relay chain block candidate. The set of information is two pieces of data. Availability. Does this validator have egress transaction post information from this block so that they are able to provide validate parachain candidates on the following block? They may vote either 1 for known or 0 not yet known. Once they vote 1, they are committed to voting similarly for the rest of this process. Later votes that do not respect this are grounds for punishment. Validity. Is the parachain block valid and is all externally referenced data, e.g. transactions, available? This is only relevant for validators assigned to the parachain on which they are voting. They may vote either 1 valid, negative 1 invalid, or 0 not yet known. Once they vote non-zero, they are committed to voting this way for the rest of the process. Later votes that do not respect this are grounds for punishment. All validators must submit their votes. Votes may be resubmitted, qualified by the rules above. The progression of consensus may be modeled as multiple standard BFT consensus algorithms over each parachain happening in parallel. Since these are potentially thwarted by a relatively small minority of malicious actors being concentrated in a single parachain group, the overall consensus exists to establish a backstop, limiting the worst case scenario from deadlock to merely one or more void parachain blocks and a round of punishment for those responsible. The basic rules for validity of the individual blocks that allow the total set of validators as a whole to come to consensus on it becoming the unique parachain candidate to be referenced from the canonical relay must have at least two-thirds of its validators voting positively and none voting negatively. Also, must have over one-third validators voting positively to the availability of egress queue information. If there is at least one positive and at least one negative vote on validity, an exceptional condition is created and the whole set of validators must vote to determine if there are malicious parties or if there is an accidental fork. Aside from valid and invalid, a third kind of votes are allowed, equivalent to voting for both, meaning that the node has conflicting opinions. This could be due to the node's owner running multiple implementations which do not agree indicating a possible ambiguity in the protocol. After all votes are counted from the full validator set, if the losing opinion has at least one small proportion to be parameterized at most half, perhaps significantly less, of the votes of the winning opinion, then it is assumed to be an accidental parachain fork and the parachain is automatically suspended from the consensus process. Otherwise, we assume it is a malicious act and punish the minority who were voting for the dissenting opinion. The conclusion is a set of signatures demonstrating canonicality. The relay chain block may then be sealed and the process of sealing the next block begun. Section 6.5 Improvements for Sealing Relay Blocks While this sealing method gives strong guarantees over the system's operation, it does not scale out particularly well since every parachain's key information must have its availability guaranteed by over one-third of all validators. This means that every validator's responsibility footprint grows as more chains are added. While data availability within open consensus networks is essentially an unsolved problem, there are ways of mitigating the overhead placed on validator nodes. One simple solution is to realize that while validators must shoulder the responsibility for data availability, 
they need not actually store, communicate, or replicate the data themselves. Secondary data silos, possibly related to, or even the very same, collators who compile this data, may manage the task of guaranteeing availability with the validators providing a portion of their interest and income in payment. However, while this might buy some intermediate scalability, it still does not help the underlying problem. Since adding more chains will in general require additional validators, the ongoing network resource consumption, particularly in terms of bandwidth, grows with the source of the chains, an untenable property in the long term. Ultimately, we are likely to keep bashing our heads against the fundamental limitation which states that for a consensus network to be considered available safe, the ongoing bandwidth requirements are of the order of total validators times total input information. This is due to the inability of an untrusted network to properly distribute the task of data storage across many nodes, which sits apart from the eminently distributable task of processing. Section 6.5.1, Introducing Latency. One means of softening this rule is to relax the notion of immediacy. By requiring 33% plus one validators voting for availability only eventually and not immediately, we can better utilize exponential data propagation and help even out peaks in data interchange. A reasonable equality, though unproven, may be 1. Latency equals participants times chains. Under the current model, the size of the system scales with the number of chains to ensure that processing is distributed. Since each chain will require at least one validator and we fix the availability attestation to a constant proportion of validators, then participants similarly grows with the number of chains. We end up with 2 latency equals size squared, meaning that as the system grows, the bandwidth required and latency until availability is known across the network, which might also be characterized as the number of blocks before finality increases with its square. This is a substantial growth factor and may turn out to be a notable road blocker and force us into non-flat paradigms such as composing several polka dots into a hierarchy for multi-level routing of posts through a tree of relay chains. 6.5.2 Public Participation One more possible direction is to enlist public participation in the process through a micro-complaint system. Similar to fishermen, there could be external parties to police the validators who claim availability. Their task is to find one who appears unable to demonstrate such availability. In doing so, they can lodge a micro-complaint to other validators. POW, or staked bond, may be used to mitigate the civil attack, which would render the system largely useless. 6.5.3 Availability Guarantors A final route would be to nominate a second set of bonded validators as availability guarantors. These would be bonded just as with the normal validators and may even be taken from the same set, though if so, they would be chosen over a long-term period, at least per session. Unlike normal validators, they would not switch between parachains, but rather would form a single group to attest to the availability of all important interchain data. This has the advantage of relaxing the equivalence between participants and chains. Essentially, chains can grow along with the original chain validator set, whereas the participants, and specifically those taking part in data availability testament, can remain at the least sublinear and quite possibly constant. Section 6.5.4 Collator Preferences One important aspect of this system is to ensure that there is a healthy selection of collators creating the blocks in any given parachain. If a single collator dominated a parachain, then some attacks become more feasible since the likelihood of the lack of availability of external data would be less obvious. One option is to artificially weight parachain blocks in a pseudo-random mechanism in order to favor a wide variety of collators. In the first instance, we would require as part of the consensus mechanism that validators favor parachain block candidates determined to be heavier. Similarly, 
we must incentivize validators to attempt to suggest the weightiest block they can find. This could be done through making a portion of their reward proportional to the weight of their candidate. To ensure that collators are given a reasonable fair chance of their candidate being chosen as the winning candidate in consensus, we make the specific weight of a parachain block candidate determinate on a random function connected with each collator. For example, taking the XOR distance measure between the collator's address and some cryptographically secure pseudo-random number determined close to the point of the block being created, a notional winning ticket, this effectively gives each collator, or more specifically each collator's address, a random chance of their candidate block winning over all others. To mitigate the Sybil attack of a single collator, mining, an address close to the winning ticket and thus being a favorite each block, we would add some inertia to a collator's address. This may be as simple as requiring them to have a baseline amount of funds in the address. A more elegant approach would be to weight the proximity to a winning ticket with the amount of funds parked at the address in question. While modeling has yet to be done, it is quite possible that this mechanism enables even very small stakeholders to contribute as a collator.